And we are live. Another edition of the Let's Go Ricky Roll podcast. This time it's a playoff edition. Bethel Duran alongside Ricky Romero, former Blue Jay pitcher, Major League pitcher, and the name of the podcast. And we are here for you guys. I've uh, been busy the last couple weeks. Uh, one week I had to work. Last week, Ricky had to go to jury duty for the first time in his life, and he's shaking his head. So today's edition, we're bringing it to you on a Wednesday uh, because we want to talk uh, playoff baseball, and it's been pretty good. Like the group chat that you guys have heard about, uh, we go back and forth, and we, it's really good, the information. And I'm like, damn, Ricky, let's just have a normal baseball talk. Not like with the guest, what's your story, just a good baseball talk because Ricky's mind when it comes to baseball and also with Tolly and everybody else is like, oh, like – would love for you, the fans, to hear it, and we're going to have some of that talk today. Um, I'm covering the NLCS for CBS2 here in Los Angeles, and then a guest that we're going to have later on the day, live from Fenway, Robert Flores, for the MLB Network. He's going to be joining us right now. So, Ricky, before we get into the baseball, how are you doing? Are you still on jury duty? <laughs> I'm doing good, man. No, uh, jury duty. Holy shit, man. It, it, it was one of those things where um, – now that I know, everyone says that they're like, oh, yeah, you made a rookie mistake. We just toss them in the trash. And I'm like, they're like worried about it. And uh, I actually showed up. They didn't think I was going to get picked. I'm number three on the on the list. So, of course, I'm one of the top 12 jurors in this case. Uh, and I'm thinking like, yeah, everyone's like, yeah, you'll just come in. You told me you'll come yeah. in. They'll, they'll send you to a room and then they'll give you your slip. See ya. No, I get stuck there, there for the next five days listening to this. Probably one of the, I mean, I guess you're allowed to talk to about it now. I think that they give you the, but it, it was one of the stupid, too, stupidest cases I've ever heard. Like the fact that we were there, it was wasting our time. The rest of the jurors agreed. It was like just such a waste of time. It was, you know, that this guy break a, a mirror or not. That was, that was the case. And we were supposed to solve it. I mean, they couldn't solve it and they wanted us to solve it. So it was so dumb, man. It was, but it was cool. I, 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 honestly can say that um listening to a case and sitting there and just people uh or lawyers trading jabs at each other and and the questioning and all that that was cool the part where you have to sit down and, and come with the verdict that that part sucked because yeah. we couldn't come to agreement so yeah it was it was a long like five days i was there like at like 9 30 in the morning till like four o'clock man and it's it's just like i said it was a waste of time because of the case i thought it, you know if it was a different case where it's like bigger and more serious but this was literally like a 69 year old man versus an 18 year old kid and i was like holy crap yeah <laughs> we are getting after it uh we'll talk about that later we're joining us right now from fenway park is robert flores roflo is joining us right now uh just got off the set of mlb network at uh fenway park so you'll be able to hear Robert. Uh, you see him. Hey, what's up? All right, we hear you. Are you roaming around Fenway right now? Uh huh. Let me show you. Okay. Can so you we got see? the dugout. Yeah, here we go. <laughs> yeah. So I'm here. All right. All right. So Robert yeah, Flores joining us right now. We appreciate you as you're eating fries. Uh, let me get rid of the. <laughs> you feeling good, Ralph Flo? Yeah, I'm good, man. It's a beautiful day. Should be a lot of fun. Game five. All right, so meet uh, Ricky Romero, Ricky Romero, Valdez, Robert Flores. Uh, Join a little bit early, but hey, we appreciate you coming up, coming on with us right now. Nice to meet you, man. How you doing? I'm good, Ricky Rowe. Everything's yeah, we good. Got, Everything's I just good. got off. Sorry, I just got off. It does, I'm famished. It does look good. It does look nice out there. Usually, I feel like by by October. Late October, Fenway, it's it's freezing cold. I'm sure the, the temperature dropped last time from from what I can tell and from what they were saying on TV. But seeing that place and just him uh, showing us around brings back a lot of nightmares because I hated <laughs> pitching. <laughs> but it, nonetheless, it's one of the most beautiful stadiums and the best atmospheres you'll ever, you'll ever get to experience, that's yeah. for sure. Bro, how was the atmosphere for the game yesterday? It was crazy, man. Um I mean, the Astros were, they were on the mat. They were staggered. They were staking that. I know you do a lot of boxing. They had just taken an eight count and they were about to be counted out before Altuve really flipped the script. And then that ninth inning was crazy. Um, it'll be interesting to see how much, if any, carries over um, to, uh, to, to today's game. Because uh, is it a sign of things to come? Did something unlock for this Astros lineup? Um, we'll have to wait and see. 
And and I and I also think that the key for 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 we all know that they have an explosive offense, but the key is going to be their starters. Their starters have been right um, have struggled big time in this series, and and if they uh, continue to struggle, I mean, it's just gonna you can't you can't you can't win like that. You're gonna need those guys to get yeah. you know to get five six innings in and, and and turn it over to that bullpen. But if those starters can't get going, um, then it's 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 gonna be an uphill climb, I think. And uh, you know, yeah. I, I was a little I mean, disappointed. I was a little Bet, disappointed. Bet Ricky, if, if the Astros, it feels like if the Astros got a starter into the fourth inning, that they would throw a parade for the guy. I mean, it's just been, uh, it, it's been so weird, and they've had to deal with, uh, they've had to deal with a lot, um, but they're still in it, and you you get the sense that they feel good where they're at, and they have look, Fromber can, can Fromber can come out here and and go six and a third, seven innings. He's that good, uh, but we'll just yeah. just have to wait and see. Well, that's the thing. That's a that's a cool thing about October too, and we've seen it so many times. You get the unsung heroes, the guys that come out of nowhere that no one's really talking about. And like you said, that guy can be that he can be one of those guys tonight. And and if I've I've said it, I I, I like the Houston lineup. They're loaded, but it's just a matter of their pitching. And we we it's cliche as it sounds, pitching wins ball games. And and if you're able to pitch, you're you're gonna be you're gonna be sitting pretty. A hundred percent, Beto Fromber. Um... You know he's just he's got to be around the strike zone. He's got to make. He just can't give up walks. Look, this Red Sox lineup is is deep. It is devastating and it's dangerous. Um, but he just can't give them free passes. He's got to find a way to keep them off the base paths and make them earn it. And uh, yeah. just take his chances and see what he got, what he has. And you know, and I'm telling you, man, I'm telling you, the the, the crowd play, plays a big role too, man. I know you, I showed you guys that video where they they heckled the, the shit out of. Uh, Garrett Cole the whole time, and that's how they are. I mean, as soon as you step foot in that bullpen, they are all over you. I mean, they go through the whole lineup, and they're going through scenarios, and they're saying, like, they'll call whoever's coming up, you know, Sandra Bogart's two-run home run, and then it's in your head the whole time. You're trying to throw good. It's almost better if you just wear some AirPods in the in the bullpen. Uh, now that not that you're able now that you're able to do stuff like that, but man, those fans are they they they, they can get on you and it, they can play a big role, and and that's the beauty of having home field advantage, especially at Fenway Park. Yeah, Robert, you're from Houston, right? So yeah, I am. You're, you're from Houston. How hard is it for people to understand that just because you're from Houston doesn't mean you're rooting for the Astros? Like you're actually doing your job. Like you're a host at MLB Network. You're not saying, "Hey, let's go Astros." Yeah, I, look, I, I think people that watch our show know that I'm from Houston and know I grew up rooting for the Astros, but it's just like um, it's like the players that are playing, you know, players that play for the Red Sox. They didn't grow up. Not all of them grew up in Boston. Not all of them grew up in Massachusetts. Not all of them grew up. Many of them grew up rooting for other teams, but you're they're professionals and you do what's best for your team. And, that, and that's the way I feel about it. I mean, I do what's best for, uh, for, you know, for the company I work for. And I, and, um, yes, you definitely, you've got to keep it professional. Uh, uh, that, that is something that is paramount, but, but you're right. That's something that, that some people just can't, uh, get past and they'll always assume that I'm an Astros apologist or, yeah, you or are. whatever, but well, you are, you are. You now, know how it is. You can't, now, you can't Robert, please everyone. Do you sing Sweet Caroline? No. No, now that I will not do. No. I, ref, I re, That I will not do. No. Hey, Absolutely not. Would, Neil I Diamond either. is not it's, on my playlist. It's the same thing. I get a lot of messages like, hey, are you rooting for the Dodgers? And I'm like, not really. I mean, I grew up cheering for them, but now it's – I'm indifferent. I, I really don't. Whether they win, whether they lose, it I just it just doesn't impact me the way it would have when I was a little yeah. kid. You know, so that's just the, the, a lot of people expect because oh yeah, you're, you're from East LA and you grew up there and you're not rooting for them. And I'm like, hey, you know, I, I also hold a little bit of a grudge because they had a chance to sign me twice and they didn't. So that's that's where we're at. <laughs> <laughs> well, besides that, you're good. <laughs> now, Robert, uh, I know you're busy. You got a busy day on MLB Network. A lot of stuff running around. Let me uh, get this perspective from you. You're in Boston. You're with MLB Network. What is the view of the Dodgers in the NLCS series? Well, two two things. Overall, I, I believe they're still the favorite 
to win the World Series. Okay, so that's kind of a grand view or a, a larger view. But drilling it down to what happened yesterday, they were, again, like the Astros, they were staggered. They were nearly down and out. Um, and coincidentally, their big moment, like the Astros' big moment, came in the eighth inning. You know, Bellinger uh, responding with the big knock and Altuve responding in the big knock also in the eighth inning. Yeah, but I, I still think that the the Dodgers, for me, remain the favorite to win it all. Yes, they're dealing with some issues, injury issues. The Max Muncy injury, I think, is huge. Um, and I don't think that's getting enough play. Um, but I still think that they can overcome it. I still think that they will or who's playing either the Red Sox or the Astros in the World Series if they should get past the Braves. All right, all right. Robert Flores, Roll Flow is how you can follow him on social media. Uh, he's doing a great job with MLB Network. Um, and you know what, Robert? This might def- be the first time that you've ever been on an all-Mexican panel. Uh... <laughs> <laughs> Hopefully not the last. No, man. Yeah. We got Robert. All right, how do we get Ricky on MLB Network? Because you got some guys out there that just. <laughs> <laughs> Don't answer that. Guy. Don't answer that, Rob. Don't answer that. I'll get, yeah, get in I, trouble. I won't. I won't. <laughs> but we got to get Ricky on there because you guys got to have somebody from the West Coast on MLB Network eventually. I'm sorry I didn't hear you. What was that? <laughs> Rolflow, appreciate you, man. We'll talk to you soon. Thank hey, you always. Hey, you got Robert. it, guys. Appreciate it. Have a good one. See That's ya. It. <laughs> I told you I was going to try. <laughs> hey, man. Sorry. It was a little hard to hear. I no, don't worry, Robert. Robert, 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 where you at? Where you at? Where you at? Where you at? You're good. So. I told you. There you go. Rolflow, appreciate it. Um, hang up on it before you say anything that gets me fired because uh, the microphone's yeah, always hot. I will. All right. See you I told him I was going to ask for a job, but I thought he, he probably thought I was going to ask for a job for me, not for you. Uh, so we'll get to <laughs> But no, good dude, man. Uh, you know, the connection is a little shady at uh, Fenway, uh, but I just want to hear, yeah. get a little connection, a, a feel of what it's like at Fenway to hear from him. And, you know, a guy at MLB Network still thinks the Dodgers are the favorite, Rick. And it's like that perspective was going on. And, uh, it's interesting. I also wanted to have a mind. I wanted to hear what people on the East Coast are saying, you know, what the what network is saying. They had some good answers. Yeah, and, and it's true, man. Uh, the Dodgers winning that game yesterday, it's almost like, can that be the dagger in the heart to the Atlanta Braves? Just because, and you were there yesterday, and you saw the energy of the Atlanta Braves, and you were telling me, like, these guys are, like, feeling themselves, they're dancing, they're feeling it, and then the eighth inning comes, Everything's rolling for you. Belly comes up, boom, three-run home run. And then it's just like the whole place finally erupted, you know. And and the Braves, you can just tell they were like, oh, no, I think we just woke up these guys. And mm-hmm. and sometimes that's all it takes, you know. that that I, I take it back to game two. You know, game two was a tough loss for the L.A. Dodgers. And, and you know, we, we've talked about it a lot, you know, about the, the relief appearances and, and who they brought in and, and and who they should have gone to and at the end of the day we're not the ones making the decisions you know it's it's dave roberts and and andrew friedman and 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 those guys but we can play manager all we want you know but to me and i'll continue to say this you know you have a guy in julio arias who who has won 20 games who has been a starter all year who hasn't came out of the bullpen at all all season and then all of a sudden you expect them to get three big outs in the eighth inning because it's his bullpen day, it's not the same. You know, I don't care what anybody says. You know, I was a starter my whole life, uh, and I spent a little bit of time in the bullpen. And and when you when they tell you to warm up, you're not warming up as if it was a bullpen day. You're warming up, firing bullets to try and get into that game. And uh, and and hopefully, you know, it doesn't affect him today. Because again, it's two more days that he or it's two days that he got to recover, and now he's back on the bump tonight. Um, so. You know, at the end of the day, you want to see a Julio who's well rested, and we've all seen what he can do when he's well rested. And and what he did this this season was unbelievable. You know, uh, it's just to win twenty games in the big leagues. That's that's crazy. You know, and then on top of that, to be able to have a sub three ERA, you know, or under three ERA, just you know tells you the the type of stuff that he has. So I was a little disappointed to see him in the eighth inning, and especially with the with the way the bullpen the bullpen the Dodgers bullpen situation is. You know, you could have 
Yeah. Again, we could play devil, devil's advocate and say this is, they should have done this, they should have done that. Things didn't work out because then, what if he comes in, gets three quick outs? We're not even talking about this, you know. But still, again, a guy that's a starter that's used to his routine gets thrown off a little bit. You know, you just want to see him fresh. You know, you you, you want to see him fresh. And again, big game today because he's expected to go deep into that game after Ooh. what happened. Yesterday, you know, um, so many bullpen arms got used. Uh, but I, I still think the Dodgers are sitting pretty today, you know, with, with that bullpen situation. They just need, you know, five, six innings out of Julio and then turn it over to that bullpen. And uh, it's going to be interesting. I think the winner of this game might dictate who wins this series. Really? Yeah, yeah I think so. I mean, think about it. I mean, if the, if the Braves win, they go up 3-1 and, 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 and they, got, they get to go home and you get three chances. If you don't beat, a, if you don't beat the L.A. Dodgers in three chances, then – some something's wrong, you know. But uh, again, I, I I still think the I like what Roflo said. Uh, the Dodgers are still to me the favorite as of right now. Uh, even if they're down, even if they lose tonight, I still you still can't count them out, you know, because they've played so well and we've seen um, that lineup struggle a little bit, you know. I mean, we've seen especially Trey Turner, scoring position. Yeah, Trey Turner, who was the battling uh, batting average uh, champ this year, he has struggled. Uh, JT has struggled. Um, and it almost takes like one swing for those guys to get going. And if they get hot, man, that, that lineup, you know, we know what they can do. This is but why again, we had uh, the podcast today, just so you could hear that perspective from Ricky. Because I, get, I, I know I on the though, podcast we interview people, but when you hear Ricky actually talking baseball, it's like, damn, you get fired up. That's why I wanted to do the podcast. Today. Well, and, and I told you that I, I told you this, guys, I told you guys from the beginning, I was like, Cody Bellinger, man. I mean, he's he is the key. I know he struggled. But at the end of the season, even when he was um, striking out, he was taking great swings. And you can just tell when a guy's feeling it. And I'm sure, you know, nobody wants to struggle the way he has. And and I see a lot of people bash him and 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 talk shit about him. But damn, the dude's not trying to go out there and fail. You know, he's a former MVP, and and he's still a guy that that can do some damage. And I'm glad that he that this this, this playoff. Uh, this playoff, uh, these playoff games have given him a chance to to kind of make everyone forget what he did during the season, you know. And and we all know what he's capable of. And for him to to see him hit that ball yesterday, Oof. I mean, first of all, I don't know how he hits it. That ball is up at the letters, and and it's a ball that he struggled with. And um, you know, and he put a good swing on it, and and he trusted he trusted himself. And Dude, again, he, Ricky, he had the stadium shaking. Uh, it sure. was shaking I, yesterday. I was a little disappointed, though, uh, to all you uh, fans who decided to leave the game early. That's man, that's kind of you know, I'm gonna get into that right now. I'm gonna get into, I'm gonna get into yeah. that. You know why? You know why? Because it was only three runs. If I, I understand if it was a blowout, you're trying, but God, Lee, man, you missed a classic. Like, why, why even spend all that money if you're gonna leave? That's early? another thing. Why spend all that money? Why spend? And yeah. Speaking of people in their cars. Uh, Josh Tolley is joining us right now in his car, <laughs> running around. Yeah, are, Tolley, are you leaving the Dodger game right now? I no, it's not the fifth inning. <laughs> <laughs> he's the Midwest he's, uh, guy coming in strong. He's actually, I'm, I'm sure he's driving. Uh, he's probably on his way to interview for that GM job with the New York Mets. Oh, you interview for the Mets no, GM job? No, <laughs> no, come on, no. <laughs> I, don't, I don't think I want that. No, I just left Syracuse, New York, on my, on my way back. Uh, on my way back home. You're on the way back to the farm. Yep, on the way back to the farm. I got. I, I I'm out in uh, civilization today. <laughs> He's a man in a while. Uh, totally. I, we only keep you a couple of minutes because I know you're probably gonna lose signal somewhere in the woods, and I think it already happened. <laughs> <laughs> what do, What are you driving? Let like, me pull. Hey, hold on. Let me pull over. <laughs> This is awesome right here. The podcast is live right now. Tony's probably Ricky. He has a four by four, right? He has to have like a four by four with some big tires. He's probably yeah, driving a hard Ford. What are you driving, Tony? Totally? Big red, big red Toyota Tundra. <laughs> it's a farm truck, guys. Come on. <laughs> All right, Tony. Hey, uh, good, good to see you, Josh. Good to see you. I'm sure you have a lot to say about these see, playoffs. I do. I do. Um, where do we, where do we want to start? Wherever you want, you start wherever you want to go. Totally rant. I want go to, for it. I want uh, to start. I want, I want I want you to start. Give me your 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 input on uh, one uh, game two, Los Angeles Dodgers against the Atlanta Braves, eighth inning, bringing in Julio, especially after not giving him a start game five, 
versus the Giants because, again, analytics said otherwise. Give, give me your, your your input on that. And, and, and just for people to see, because people are like, they didn't give him that. Not only did they give him a start, they still threw him four innings. Two days later, he comes in, throws out of the pen. Now, two days later, he has to make the biggest start of the season for the Los Angeles Dodgers, which is today. I don't tell me he's frozen. Where'd he go? Oh, no. He frozen? Keep talking, Tolly. Don't worry. Talk. 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 We can hear you. I think I'm frozen. It's all right. Talk. Talk. Ah, he hung up. <laughs> Damn, Ricky. That was a good question, too. All right. We see know, the comments Ricky. coming in. Uh, Eric Camargo said Ricky needs uh, – JT needs Ricky's bat to get hot again. Hey, wouldn't be, wouldn't be a bad idea. Right. I got one guy going in his career. Yep. All right, Tolly. Edwin and What do you think? Did you hear um, my question? I, I have to say – I did. I heard your question. Sorry. Yeah, I clearly lost service. Um, I was, you know what I've been surprised that the Dodgers have done, and they've, they've been actually halfway successful with it, is using the opener – um, idea. I am. Um, I am surprised. I'm surprised a that they're doing it. I am surprised that it's working. Number one. I agree with you 100 percent, Ricky. Like, I mean, and, and the thing about Julio is he's been there and done it. Like, give the kid the ball and see how far he can go. Um, I, I I am shocked that 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 has worked for as long as it did for them. Um, I I me personally, like, I, I agree with you. This is a kid that deserves a full start, and he's successful. He's been successful all season, so I, I I am definitely shocked. I just I just you know you know what I what it comes comes down to, Josh and I and, and we talked about this, Beto. Would they do this to Clayton Kershaw? Would they do this to Walker Bueller? Would they say, hey, game five, you're not starting? You know what? We're gonna go with an opener because the numbers are whatever, whatever. Like they wouldn't do that. But this young kid, they, all of a sudden, because he's he's done the bullpen thing. I told Beto, I was like, the guy won 20 games and he was a starter all year. Why mess with that? Leave him alone. Leave him alone. Yeah. You know, let, let him. I mean, for well, me, in a, perfect, in a perfect situation, I would have loved to see Julio Urias versus Logan Webb, game five, pitch to pitch. Let's see who's may the best man win, may the best team win. And although the Dodgers, it worked out for the Dodgers because they won, still, um, you know, you throw him in relief, four innings. He's he's sharp, but, you know, he, he gets through it. And then two days later you bring them back for for or two or three days later you bring them back for game two to come and try and get three outs in the eighth inning something he hasn't done all season and and, and you know you know starters are they're they're creatures in their own way they're they're we're weird you know we we like to stay in routine we like to know you know we we have our set schedule and when you throw that off a little bit it, it kind of throws you off as a starter well just think about the warming up aspect of it just getting ready for that situation he, he hasn't been in that situation really all season. Um, and and now you're going to put him in one of the biggest moments. I, I Of course, things are going to unravel. Now, and correct me if I'm wrong, but my understanding is the Dodgers did this because of the batter matchups. Is that is that accurate or no? One of the or reasons. Did I make that up? Yeah, one of the reasons. Cool. They're, they're, the computer, yeah. we don't know what the computer but, said, but that's one of the reasons. Right, but, like, that doesn't make sense to me. Like, this is where old school, new school baseball is getting in the way. To, to Ricky's point, the kid won 20 games. Reward the dang kid at, at the very least. And people mm -hmm. say, well, that's, you know, yeah, that's, that's a great feat, but, like, we're trying to win games. Well, he just won you 20 games. You may not even be in this spot if it wasn't for this kid. I, I, <laughs> I, I'm 100% on board. I, I have been shocked at how they've been um, leveraging him and using him all, th this whole time. Yeah. Yeah. And, and, and also it, God forbid you, 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 you hurt the kid too. You know, <laughs> I mean, that, that's the one thing that, that comes to mind. You, know, you want to keep this kid healthy. You want to keep them uh, on the field and, and, and stuff like this, you know, can go sideways sometimes. So you, you would hate to see a, a kid like this with this amount of talent, you know, get hurt because of a situation like this. And, you know, he can get hurt anytime, but I'm saying like, something that he hasn't been used to. And and Josh, they kept saying like, oh, it's his bullpen day. It was his bullpen day that game too. And I'm like, I don't care. Bull you know, you know, starters, Josh, you've been in that bullpen when you catch a starter for a bullpen day. It's literally 70, 75%, 80% max. And now you're telling this kid, hey, get in there. You're not going 70, 80% max. You're going 100 every pitch to try and get ready for whoever you got up in that, in that eighth inning. 
Yeah, and one thing about uh, Julio, I was saying, telling you guys in the group chat, I'm like, something's going to happen because yesterday Scott Boris called over the big writers, and they were around him. He had the New York Times, the Washington Post, uh, LA Times, the Athletic. They were all around Scott, and I wasn't invited to that part, but I stayed far enough away where I could eavesdrop on some of it because, you know, I'm a reporter, supposedly, and I was texting you guys like, hey, this is going to happen. Today, story comes out, Scott Boris with uh, quotes about how he doesn't like the way they're treating Julio, that they didn't, that Strasburg was shut down uh, in that playoff run, and he's still pitching. Matt Harvey decided to go with it with the Mets that year and has never been the same Matt Harvey ever. I think he was with the Angels last I heard or something like that. But anyways, you can hear Boris's frustration with it, and I did see Julio yesterday. And I'm being serious today about my reporting stuff. And I saw Julio yesterday when uh, it, the, they were in the uh, video of him playing soccer with Bruzar Granoval and Victor Alvarez. Yesterday, he didn't do that. It was just throwing a uh, side session. So he got done, and he walked by me, and I'm standing there ready to do my report. And, I'm, and he just, he, he, I'm like, hey, how are you feeling? He's like, you do what you do. Do what we do. Hacemos lo que hacemos. Like, it just kept on going. I'm like, yeah, this guy, I mean, I've known him since he was a teenager, still had, and it's like a different demeanor with him right now, Rick. It's like, I know it's the playoffs. I know we're cool. But you can tell that there's something about him that's just like irritating him, you know? Well, I mean, and he's never going to say what he really of feels. Of course. He's going to take the ball because that's what he's always known, you know? And that's what you're going to do when you're when you're competing. You're competing with those 20, 24 other guys in that clubhouse and for them, you know? But at the end of the day, it's, I, you know, like, again, um, you, you don't want to you don't want to mess with routine and and – and I'm sure it's it's not I, 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 you know I don't know whether it's sitting well with him or not, but I'm sure if it was up to him, he'd like to stay on his schedule. <laughs> yeah, and then now today he's I, gonna go and pitch. I, I can understand if, if if it was game seven, you know, and and your game they played game two like if it was game seven, yeah. and I'm like Jesus Christ, like what what are we doing here? Like it's it's not, you know, even it's crazy because even they, when they went down two zero, everyone's like, oh, the Dodgers are still gonna win the series, yeah. and you we still see it that way. Yeah. Totally. What's what, it look like for New York? What do you York? think, Rick? You think that you still you still got the Dodgers? I think so. I think that game last night woke him up, man. I I, I think so. Uh, again, you're you're relying on on Julio to to give you a good start today, and if he does that, and they tie if they tie this series, dude, it's 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 on. And and I know the the Braves, I believe, have Max Fried going, so that's that's been their ace all year. So if they get a big start out of him, is it Max Fried? No, tomorrow. Uh, Max Reed will be a third. Tomorrow, tomorrow, Braves tomorrow, will go bullpen tomorrow. game today. So and I told five Beto, guys I, yesterday. The winner of today's game wins the series. To me. Yeah, I I, I think I think it gave the postseason. The postseason in my mind is all momentum. Um, yeah. And I think it gives I think it gives the Dodgers after what Belly did last night. It gives the Dodgers that much more momentum. Yeah. If they would have gone down 3-0. Mm, man, Done. it would have been. It would have been. I think. Yeah, it'd be, it's tough to win four games in a row. But that home run. Yeah, I mean, it Ooh. just. I mean, I mean, the Braves. Whew, I don't know how they're feeling. I'm sure. I'm sure. I mean, it almost feels like they. They're not. It almost feels like they're not up to one. You know, it no. almost feels. It doesn't feel like that. And and on the other side, in, in the Boston Houston series, it's just. It's, those guys are just trading punches back and forth, back and forth, back and forth, and it almost has the makings of a game seven, you know. Yeah. And um, and that's like like Josh said, it's that's the beauty in baseball. It's all momentum, and right now it seems like the Houston Astros, after that big eighth inning, have all the momentum. And 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 Roflo said it, said it, you know, if they get four innings out of a starter, it's a big win for them. So it's going to be a, another big game today. So for those guys, so it, again, this this is what playoff baseball is all about. You know, <laughs> I don't man. care. I don't care that it's taking three and a half, four hours. People want to bitch and complain about that. But hey, you know what? What else are you doing? You know, if, if it's really bothering you, just turn it off. Don't watch it, you know? Pretty simple. I mean, July, August, four-hour games, I hate them. Playoff? Yeah. Look, I'm the one who says I don't watch much baseball anymore if I don't have to. I, every mm -hmm. pitch yesterday, I was watching it. I was sitting there. Luckily, I was sitting in the Spanish booth with Jaime Harrin and Fernando there. And, like, just being able to be behind them and hear it and see what's going on. And you're into it. I'm like texting you, and I'm like, Rick, here, look what the Braves dugout is doing. Let me send you guys the pictures that I sent Ricky. Because yesterday the Braves took batting practice. The Dodgers didn't. The Braves were playing that flip game. All the Latin players were messing around, and they were just having a good old time. 
This is the view it, up until the seventh inning. The Braves players are sitting on top of the dugout. They are fired up for everything, all momentum on their side. And this is the seventh inning, but you can see the fans standing up behind the dugout, going back and forth. And it was the intensity, the atmosphere. It was fantastic. But then in the eighth inning, Ricky, talk about that deflated part. And I used deflated on TV a lot yesterday on purpose. The, <laughs> the Braves dugout, in the, after their Bellinger home run, everybody was sitting down. I didn't get a picture of it because it got dark, but they were sitting down. It went from being – so the Braves, to me, seem like a really emotional team right now where it's really, really high and really, really down. And you've taught us you can't be that up and down yin-yang. you got to be somewhere in the middle in the playoffs. And that's where, you know, uh, Dave Roberts said, you know, they were dead in the water here. You know, they were yeah. dead in the water. They didn't have it. And Bellinger, they and had the, that. To me, the Dodgers are that type of team that if, if they smell blood – they start smelling it, and next thing you know, it's like, okay, we we we're gonna hit our stride here, and um, you know, they're 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 also coming from a tough series, you know, where they got taken into a game five, yep. you know, so they 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 they've played a little bit more extra games than the Atlanta Braves, so all that all that stuff goes into you got to take it into consideration, you know, you you look at it, a guy like JT, we're not used to seeing him struggle. You know, and everyone's waiting for the hit. And but you can almost tell is, is he really healthy? Is you know, again, it's the playoffs. He's going out there, he's grinding it out. The the team's much better when he's in that lineup and 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 he can all he's always a threat, you know, but it, you kind of question a little bit if he's if he's healthy. I know they talk about his hamstring and his neck and all that, but he's another guy that makes that lineup go, you know, not, not with home runs or anything. But he, he always see he always seems like he's he he comes up in the clutch or he'll get a base hit to get the the, the rally going he's always he's always that guy so if he gets going today it, it, it can be it can be a good sign for the la dodgers yeah there's a montoya a good friend who plays sunday leagues says there's videos of the braves talking smack to the fans i saw that i didn't see the video but i saw the players turning around yeah, but, hey, they were going hey, back and forth yeah well sometimes the fans ask for it too you know i mean these guys are human and they have they, they're they're allowed to talk shit back you know yeah, but and, in the and, playoffs you're talking like that who cares i mean <laughs> I'm sure they're disrespecting them. I'm sure they're not yeah. saying nice things. Oh, yeah. You know? So, what I'm impressed so, with is that those are the expensive seats that are talking trash. Good for you people. <laughs> you guys in the expensive seats going after it. Huh? But, yeah. But, but if you're going to dish it out, you better be able to take it. And I'm yeah, sure the Braves But that's my point that. is the Braves players are so comfortable and feeling pretty good that they're talking back yeah. to the – that's how comfortable they were yesterday. It would be interesting to see. I mean, this, this type of stuff happens all the, the whole season. You're yeah. – Somehow, some way, I never really did, but you, you hear guys every once in a while throw it like, "Shut the fuck up," you know, or like stuff like that. You know, I mean, it, it just it's trying not, right now. It's magnified, and everyone's gonna pull out their phones yeah. right away. But stuff like this happens. I'm that. That's just man, whatever to me. Yeah, I like that. I, I'm all for it. you know me. I'm all about team petty. If you're gonna say something, go for it. Just don't get all sensitive about it if you're a fan. Oh, he turned around. Yeah. He said this. Or just yeah, don't like you know it. it banter like that is cool but obviously once you start um insulting somebody or talking about somebody's family or shit like that then, then that's where i have a problem yeah, yeah 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 exactly uh uh we're, we're gonna have a uh, pedro mar from the fox sports in a couple minutes uh this is good stuff man good stuff ricardo there it is fired up yeah, did you gonna... did josh lose service yeah josh is probably like somewhere in the middle of the woods somewhere so we'll get going yeah. on no, oh, um, but no, this, this is interesting, and like I said, we we really don't ever really talk baseball, but right now I feel yeah. like there's a lot of stuff going on, yeah. and a lot of stuff that people are wondering, and um, you know, again, I'm all for for analytics, um, you know, when it comes to to certain situations, um, the the game of baseball shouldn't be super all analytics, 100 percent in. But there should be a balance, and I think uh, when when there's a balance, you you see uh, a lot better baseball being played. Um, there's certain times where you have to play the numbers, um, and there's also certain times where you kind of you watch what's going on, you know. And, and the game will tell you, and the game will dictate how how you should go about it. And uh, you know, again, we're sitting here, we're managing from here. We don't know what's going on in between. It happens so fast. That's the other thing. It happens so fast for those guys. Dave Roberts. Um, Alex Cora, uh, you know, uh, Brian Snitker, all that's, that shit happens so fast, man. They got to be able to make decisions. That's the other thing that people don't talk about. They got to be able to make decisions on the fly. They got to be thinking like, okay, 
this situation happens here. I'm hoping for a one, two, three. But if this situation happens here, what do I got to do? Who do I have to have up? Who's yeah. ready? Who isn't ready? Um, you know, and and all that stuff, it, it, it's happening fast. Everyone, we're able to dissect it because it's happening slow on our TV. We're like, what the fuck is he doing? But I never like to criticize that way because it's yeah. like the same, the same fan who, oh, why didn't he hit that ball out? Well, shit, you're watching it from a different angle. The guy's throwing 100 and that ball is moving. You know, it, it's not that easy. You, you know, ball. yesterday I had a, I was walking by after I got some food and I'm in line. I hear some fan go, you, you know how easy it is to bunt down the line? When they do a shift, all you have to do is bunt. And, I, and you popped in my head, like your your buddy that John, who thinks he can hit off of you, he said, I'll just bunt off of you, Ricky. You're like, yeah, you know what? Bunting is hard in general, let alone when a guy's throwing it 100, and let alone when a guy doesn't do it normally. Yeah, yeah, they're, they are shifting. But, oh, just drop a bunt, you'll be safe. Like, I'm like, oh, those are the fans that show up right now. Yeah, yeah, and and, and again, and, and it's easier said than done, you know, that – that fucking ball is moving hard, you know, and, 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 and when you're, when you're standing 60 feet, six inches, I, I can put any fan out there and it, I guarantee you their legs will be shaking, you know, because I, I've stood there and, and when you square up to bunt, you don't realize one, how close that pitcher is two how hard the ball's coming in. And three, you don't know what kind of pitch he's going to throw. If he throws a sinker or if he throws a, a curveball or he throws, you know, anything, you know, you're just, it, it, Big league pitching is different than your Sunday league baseball. Yep. All right, so joining us now is going to be – we're talking about the analytics. <clears throat> Pedro Mora uh, covers baseball for Fox, and he was with the Athletic before. Does a good – I've known him since he was in college. And the reason I want to have Pedro on, uh, Pedro Mora with amazing hair this morning. Fantastic hair. Beautiful. <laughs> Great flow there, Pedro. That's what happens when you're in your 20s, Rick. You can have hair like that. Um, the reason <laughs> I want to like have Pedro on uh, – well – <laughs> is Pedro's a, a younger writer and does a fantastic job, but Pedro is also an, a writer who really gets into the analytics. He's not one of the analytic nerds, but he's one of the guys who uses analytics into his writing, and you, he can give us a different perspective because he covers baseball for First of all, good morning, Pedro. Thanks for waking up. Yeah. How are um, you guys Ricky, Ricky Romero, Pedro Mora. Okay, now, Pete. I call him Pete because he's uh, – where are you from? You're from Brazil, right? <laughs> My parents are from Brazil. I was born here. I can't claim it. Yeah, he was yeah, born by Pat. Yeah, you can. Yeah, you can. You can claim him, bro. You claim him. <laughs> hey, if you want to be in the Latino media all stars, we'll make sure you're from Brazil. Uh, but let me get this, Pedro. Uh, we'll only have you on for a couple of minutes. The analytics part with the Dodgers, and you've written extensively about this. How much of that factors into Dave Roberts' managing style? Does he do it on his own, or is it all collective effort? He's definitely not doing it on his own. There's absolutely no way, you know, he, when he brings in Max Scherzer, you know, in the ninth inning of game five, when he brings in Julio Urias in, in, in the eighth inning of game two, he's not doing that on his own at all. I mean, this is this is something that the organization that, you know, like 10 people have sat and discussed and uh, and, and reasoned that that would be a good idea to, to, to pull the trigger on. It's it's um it's and it gets analytically based, but to an extent, you know decisions like that not everything that you know that fancy is controversial can be analytics based i mean like you know there's no way to quantify exactly how max scherz is going to look uh in, you know on short rest right like you know nobody really knows this is a guy who pitches every fifth day you know for for 15 years now but he doesn't pitch in relief so it's kind of a guess you know i think i think there's there's there, there's like a it's like a bogeyman of sorts like oh and, and whenever someone does something that's not you know by the book it's analytics uh and I, I don't know that that's true but in terms of lineup construction those sorts of things yes those are all you know they're they're running uh they're running models that are in all right well, what <clears throat> where you at pete you follow us it oh i think we lost it again what you think about that rick no, it's it's true. I, I agree with what he's saying. You know, I mean, not every move is analytically based. I agree with that. Um, you know, but um, we we heard from Max Scherzer. You know, after his start, he just didn't recover. And I know what it's like when you can't when you know two days after your start, it's it's tough, man. I mean, your arm feels like absolute shit. You know, from how sore it is. And he 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 complained about having dead arm and all that stuff. So. Yeah, I mean, you don't know how he's going to feel. So right there, um, and you almost saw that he really didn't complain about him being pulled. You know, I feel like usually he's yeah. like, 
down Roberts's throat, but he really didn't. And, and I think he understood the situation. He understood how he felt. And right there, you have to make a move. I don't think that's analytically made. You know, I think he, at that point, Roberts is like, I just got to ride him enough to where he gives me a few more quality outs. And then when it's time, it's time. And, and he pulled them when he had to. You said dead arm. What does dead arm feel like? Oh, man. It's just, it almost feels like um, you're going through your full mechanics. And, and, and when you're throwing the ball, usually the, when you're feeling good, the ball is just spinning. You just feel it out of your hand, nice and easy, free and easy, as we call it. And dead arm, it just, it almost seems like you're, now you're trying to throw it, trying to throw it hard and, and it's just not there. You look up and you're like, wow, like it, that was only 88, 89, 90, you know, and, and I don't know what his velocity was, um, huh. game one or yeah, game one, uh, or was it game two, game two? Uh, I don't know what his velo was, but yeah, I mean, it's just one of those things where your arm's really, really sore really sore like it's sore to where it just to wipe your own ass it, it just it, it hurts that bad. <laughs> yeah some days yes and again it, it, it's from the, the you know he's he's a guy that's a starter he's he's been a starter his whole career and now you're being asked to come and get three outs he didn't warm up you know just nice free and easy he warmed up with you know probably 30 hard bullets 40 hard bullets whatever it was and then he came in to game five and and max effort you know and um it just the, the ball doesn't feel the same when you have that arm you know out of your hand and and shoot i was surprised he was still uh he still gave him you know that many yeah. outs with that arm dude um <clears throat> pedro mora you're back right pete fix your microphone there you go yeah i can can you guys hear me yeah yeah we're good we're good we got you baby we got you we're doing all right. it here all right all right this is a fox sports so we're all we're all ready to go all right pedro uh julio urias You've been around him for a while. What happened? Why do they use him out of the pen? <laughs> so, yeah, I was trying to say this earlier. I don't know if what what I what I said came through. These these using starters in the pen uh, decisions in the playoffs, I think, are uh, among the more controversial and least defensible things you can do as a um, as an organization in the postseason because you can't possibly know how the starter is going to respond from from them and so you're making this big bet i mean the dodgers used scherzer for an inning in game five they did nlds and then they had to delay their pitching plan for this series and that might cost them this series so in terms of curious like we don't know what he's going to look like in 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 um in this start right he, we don't know if he is going to be at his best because he had to you know as ricky was saying i heard a little bit of that because he had to get warm i mean maybe he didn't you know it, it, it's not like he you know exerted a ton of energy but it was something and it's just not something he did from april to october so why did he pitch because the dodgers trust him over their their actual relievers should he have pitched Probably not, and it certainly didn't work out. So, you know, it, it's easy to say that they shouldn't have. I, I think they have a really good pen. They have a much better bullpen than the Atlanta Braves. And if they win this series, that's probably, like, the biggest reason that I can think of why it's going to happen, you know. It's because when when they get into tough situations, the Braves just don't have the arms that the Dodgers do. So I would have, you know, it, I, I know plenty of other people in baseball who would not have pulled Urias in that situation and, and brought him into that game. But, <sighs> You know, aggressiveness sometimes works. You know, it worked for Alex Cora in the 2018 Red, Red Sox run. Maybe that's uh, maybe that's what the Dodgers are thinking of and, and thinking of that team that beat them. I, I I don't know. It's 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 one of the ones that you can continually question for sure. Yeah, and, and then those things where I I feel like you know, like like Pedro said. I mean, their bullpen's plenty good enough. Um, you have a lot of money invested in that bullpen. Use them. You know, use those guys, and and they're there for a reason. Shoot, I would take one or two of those guys in that Toronto Blue Jay bullpen, and they'd be in the goddamn playoffs. So, <laughs> you know, use those guys. They're there for a reason, and and those guys, you know, when you watch a uh, uh, Joe Kelly, when you watch uh, uh, you know, Ken Kenley Jansen, I mean, holy smokes, all of, he's unhittable all of a sudden. Blake trying in, um, um, all those guys, you know, they're they're, <laughs> they're money guys, and they're guys that that can get you that are used to those situations, you know, and and again. Julio, yes, he did it last year. He 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 was unbelievable at it, but the guy was in a routine for you know for for the whole season, and then all of a sudden you expect him to kind of turn it on and get three quick outs. It, it, it's a little tough, and uh, 
I, I'm curious to see, like like you, Pedro. I, I'm curious to see how he responds today. And and I, I the guys told me they're like, hey, uh, what do you think he's doing right now? I'm like, he's probably getting treatment. That's for sure. That's what I'd be doing. You know, I mean, you're getting your arm worked on and just making sure that you that you're you're ready for the start. And again, he's a guy that. He's all guts, heart, and he's gonna go out there and give you everything he's got. That's the that's the beautiful thing about Julio Diaz. You you know that he's gonna go out there and he's not gonna make excuses. And he's just, hey, w- what do you need? And I'm gonna try and get you there. And again, for me, if they get five six innings out of him, poof, they're 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 money today. Pedro, did you think the Dodgers were done yesterday? Hell yeah, yeah, absolutely. <laughs> and- <laughs> did did I write six hundred words about how you know that they were that the season was over? Uh, in the, you know, in the six, let me in ask, the let, let me ask you, let me ask you. So you're a writer. So you're you're. I mean, you're into the eighth inning. Do you, or do you have all this? Like, do you have your story ready? Like, like kind of you're just writing, saying, all right, like you're getting this 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 article ready. That pretty much because it's over. The game's over. Like, not not according to what's going on, but it's you're done. writing it as if like, hey, it's. It, it's going to be tough. Yes, absolutely. Earlier in my career, I, I, I tried to avoid doing such things. You know, I, I thought it was kind of like, eh. I was against it. I thought, oh, watch the game. You don't know what's going to happen. But when you see this enough, I mean, you realize how how unlikely that is. And you're like, hey, you know, the, there are these two hours here. The Dodgers aren't doing anything. What What's the point of, 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 of waiting for this? You know, I know Bueller did, did poorly. I can lead with that. You know, I can lead with this guy who's, who's been their guy time and time again, letting them down. And then the offense not coming through the innings and then, and then, you know, them falling behind three. Oh, that, that was the story. I mean, that was, it was, you know, Walker Bueller flinging his hat and his love to the dugout as he, as he got, as he got back after, you know, 11 outs, the shortest start of his postseason career. So yeah, I, I had that written, honestly. I mean, I, I probably, I can be pretty confident saying I wasn't the only one. You know, Everybody was. Cause I was, st- I was standing behind some of the other writers. Everybody was delete. Just- Delete, delete, so, delete, delete, yeah, delete. You just, you just delete everything. <laughs> yeah, pretty much. I think I, I think I salvaged like a one paragraph, you know, to, to explain. Uh, <laughs> to explain I can't be a writer. No, this is why I tell you. This is why writers never want extra innings because you just want the game to be done. Because yeah, we you have some kind of story. You don't want lead changes after the seventh inning because you just want to be over with. Pedro, did yeah. you think the series was done? Absolutely. I mean, yeah, when you say done, I, I mean, yeah. I mean, they're down 3-0 with, 3-0, without, yeah. you know, with the bullpen game required in one of the next two games just to get back to Atlanta. Yeah, I don't think, you know, I mean, you know, I thought it was really interesting, very interesting that the Dodgers basically admitted it uh, after the game that they were dead. You know, Dave Roberts said, quote, we were dead in the water. You could see it. And uh, do you think they say that if they actually lose the game? You know, he doesn't <laughs> say, oh, we're dead in the water tonight. You know, there's no way we're winning. No, and uh, and Walker Buehler referred to the team being resurrected. Uh, it, 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 yeah, I, I think the overwhelming. Oh, where'd Pete go? Oh, you still there, Pete? <clears throat> oh man, lost him. Damn, he was about. To he was, drop he was on fire. He's good. Oh, there he is, Pete's right. back. Maybe, maybe not. Oh, he's gone. Yeah, good kid, man. Good kid. He knows what's up. Uh, he gives some good yeah. info. I'm gonna tell him, don't worry about it. Oh yeah, and, and that's that's good. I mean, I didn't know that about writers that they they're, they're writing their story as it goes along. And oh, he's back, dude. He's loving the podcast. He's back. Let's see here. Third time. All right, Pedro. Final words from you, man. You've been good, man. Ricky likes it. We like you. We're gonna have you on later on when the season progresses. Sure. Hey, all right, here, here. I have one final question for you. And because you you used to cover the Dodgers on a day to day basis for the Athletic, now you're doing all national stuff for Fox Sports. Um, do you have a bow tie like Ken Rosenthal? No, no. But hey, I mean, I respect it, man. He's he's donating a lot of money to yeah, he does. putting on putting on a bunch of good causes. There's there's a lot of worse little gimmicks you could have. Yeah. All right, now, okay, a real question here: <clears throat> the Dodgers analytics, the way that they construct things, the way that they do things, is it too much? Not enough? What do you feel? Is it a good balance? I mean, because we don't know anything. Because I was telling Ricky how they have different tiers of analysts in the organization that we've never even seen, right? Because the analysts don't come on the field. We don't talk to them. We don't know. We just know that at all, right? They're, they're like somewhere in the stadium, and then they stay in there wherever they may be with their computers. Like, is it too much? What is it? Yeah, I mean, Ricky, Ricky 
Ricky will appreciate this. So uh, until until last year, the the research and development department, so 24 extremely, I don't think they'll mind me saying this, extremely nerdy people, um, they operated at, their office was the old visiting clubhouse at Dodger Stadium. Uh, they converted the, the ground floor decrepit visiting clubhouse. They built a new one and they put all the Dodgers nerds in the old clubhouse. Uh, and that's where they worked. So like the, the director of the department, he had to shower in his office because he was in the manager's office. Uh, so that, that'll answer your question about where they were. But yeah, I mean, these people, you know, they're, um, you know, one of them, one of them starred on Jeopardy. Another one is a moderator on the Dodgers Reddit. These are, these are, um, these are, these are what you would conventionally describe as nerds of the team. Um, but is it too much? I guess that let's go to the answer of, you know, under Dave Roberts, this is the winningest team basically ever assembled. I mean, Dave Roberts has the best record of any manager in, in re- the regular season in baseball history. So my answer, I guess, is no. I mean, you're winning. Uh, yes, you're spending a lot of money, um, but they're winning essentially like, you know, if you're going to if you're going to send an over under at 95 wins next year, I'm going to take the over um, with, you know, this is before the offseason. This is before everything. It's just they win. They, it works, you know, whether it works perfectly in the playoffs or not, you know, they, like, they, it they, works better they win a lot. They win a lot too because they're the, at one of the highest payrolls in baseball. <laughs> sure. They're able to Definitely afford big time players, you know. And where you look at the like the yeah. Rays, the Rays are very analytical and, and they, they're like, you know, they get guys who, who nobody really knows of and, and they plug them in and it works out for them. But I feel like in the playoffs, it gets a little bit exposed with them, you know. I mean, Boston still, yeah. you know, the, they might be analytical, but they still have, you know, higher profile players. I I feel like and and guys that 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 can bang, you know. So, I yeah, I, I don't I don't know. Like, I feel like the Dodgers do do a, a pretty decent balance. They have a decent balance of it, whereas the Rays, I feel like, are very analytical. Um, and and you see it. So I don't know. Maybe yeah. I'm wrong. I, I'm with you. I'm with you. I think the, a good comp for the Dodgers to show you how they're doing better than, you know, than, than some of their peers is the Yankees, who, you know, are analytically based, spend a ton of money, are in a big market, and really haven't, haven't went on a run in, in quite a long time now. And so that's, you know, I think a reasonable alternative. And that's, you know, it's not like they're doing terribly. They're making the playoffs most years, but they're not, yeah. uh, they're not really threats to, to win at all, I would say. And uh, the Dodgers are year after year. So, yeah, yeah. I mean, well, the Rays do it better. You know, dollar for dollar, Rays do it better than anyone. But at this, you yeah. know, in this segment of the market, I think the Dodgers still dominate. And, and I'll continue to say this. In the playoffs, starting pitcher, starting pitching is big. You know, if you don't have starting pitching, it, 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 which is what's hurt the Yankees, I feel like. They have Gary Cole and question marks after that. Yeah. You know, so uh, if you struggle with starting pitching, where to me, the Dodgers, you know, you have three guys that are – nasty you know and julio bueller and, and max scherzer and you can run out those three guys twice in one series it plays into their favor so yeah pedro gomez oh no no uh, uh i saw that uh, pedro mora pedro gomez a question from the green eye bandit on r.i.p to pedro gomez because uh i walked to that clubhouse yesterday i mean the uh press room yesterday i'm like usually we would see pedro gomez from espn yesterday so uh a little weird we missed that's that, your question green eye bandit uh but pedro mora Young man from Fox Sports, I'll see you later on. Are you going to brush your hair or are you going to leave it like that? i leave it like that, man. I don't have a brush. Yeah, that's how he wears his hair, Ricky, man. Reminds me of a young Bethel Durant with attitude, hey, bro. He's oh, confident, flow. Confident, man. Yeah. That's how my that's, that's, how, that's, how Diego, that's how Diego goes to school. And I'm like, Carl, you're not going to brush it. He's like, no, that's the way you – that's – when you have hair like that, you got to – you got it's got to be like that. And I'm like, all right, cool. Hey, that's how the Brazilians are, bro. The Brazilians just let it flow right there. <laughs> All right, Pete, I'll see you later on at the, at the stadium. Uh, appreciate you. Thank you, you brother. Hey, hey, Ricky, you'll appreciate Thanks, this. Man. Pedro brings, like, super healthy snacks from Whole Foods and, like, uh, like vegan stuff, all that all that, all that, that non-baseball media, right? That's why he's one of the skinny guys in the, in the press room, so we'll be all right. My wife, my wife will be really happy. All right, Pete, <laughs> hang up. We'll talk to you later, man. All right, bye, guys. Thank you. Good kid right there. Good kid. Dude, <laughs> have you been in the Dodgers visiting clubhouse, the old one? Yeah, once for a, for like dunk. a tournament in high school. What a terrible place! I can't believe that's where they put the the. So the guy was shower in the manager office, which is like, it, imagine nineteen sixties locker room. That's exactly what it was. That's terrible, man. Yeah, yeah. interesting. The twenty four guys. And, 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 
you know, and again, it, <clears throat> there's a lot of people that knock the analytics. Yeah. There's a lot of people that just but and 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 hate the that we've evolved in this game. Again, I like the analytics to a certain extent, you know, yes. and 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 there's if we have those numbers, why not use them? You know, it, it, I'm, I'm I'm all for that. That's cool, whatever. But like again, when you're messing with routines and guys that have given you quality innings, quality starts all year, leave it as is. Yeah. You know, leave it as is for me. For me, you know, but again, I'm not the one managing. I'm not the one making decisions. I'm not the one getting paid to do any of that. I just watch from from afar, and I just, you know, I critique how I see it, and 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 that's that's the cool thing about this. You know, we, we get to be honest and, and what what's going on in our heads, and and that's cool. Pedro had a lot of cool insight on stuff, you know, and and, and it's true, you know, and, and there's certain teams, you know, like the Tampa Bay Rays, who had an unbelievable year this year. And and then come the playoffs, they, they they get a bit exposed. And I'm not saying it's because of the analytics, but it's one they run into a hot Boston team, and 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 analytics won't show that. You know, the analytics will show you, oh yeah, you know, Rafael Devers probably struggles against it, but they won't show that he's been one of their hottest hitters. You know, so that where that's where I am. Like, you know, just trust trust your instinct. Trust trust. You know, the game of baseball hasn't changed. You know, in the past. Uh, Hundred years, leave it as is. You know, a lot of people. You know, we complain about robo umpire or having robo umps and uh, leave game, leave baseball alone. You know, like when you say, "Oh yeah, uh, these human beings are not capable of calling balls and strikes." It, it's that's the beauty of just baseball. You know, you adapt, you adapt as you go on. If if guys horse shit behind the plate, you just adapt. You know, you just you, that's what we've always been taught, and and and. That's why they say, you know, it's very mental and, and you got to be able to overcome that 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 aspect of it in the game. And and, and again, we, we see the strike zone every day on TV and we're able to. Oh, that was a ball. Well, shoot, man. Again, the ball's coming. What? In about a second, less than a second. With some movement. And, and I sent you guys that message yesterday about uh, the Arizona Fall League trying robo umps. And well, it was the stat was ridiculous beyond ridiculous like the amount of walks that they're having and again our our friend alex anabia you know pitched in independent ball and he said it was it was a complete failure so you're telling me that we're going to put our marbles in on cameras and technology shit we can't even get replay right what makes you think we're going to get balls and strikes right you know <laughs> like the, the stat that came out yesterday we showed it uh in our group chat was uh last diaz missed 23 balls yesterday like that's ridiculous for being a a playoff umpire because to give you that perspective, the umpires in the playoffs earn their way in there, so they're the ones that are going to be working that series. So it's not all the umpires. But do they really? Do they really though? It's always like we see the same guys getting these big those games. Are the those like, are those are the ones that I know, rate. They and rate I understand. Better. They rate. I wish better. they. Would, I wish they would really, really rate, and we really could see what goes into picking these. You know what? It's because... interesting. That's an interesting point you say, and the reason you'll never see that is because MLB's umpire union is so strong. Yeah, yeah, yeah. The NFL um, uh, referees they get graded, and you'll see their reports. The Pac-12 uh, college football referees you get graded, and you'll see their reports on what's missed and what's not, and you will find out when guys are let go. You will find out when they're gone. NBA referees also. It's uh they have that MLB. I don't believe that they release who missed it. Now there's independent sites that are showing how many calls were missed. Yeah, but now that not... everyone's showing like they're like what they did, what they miss, and obviously Las Diaz may, yeah. missed that big time call yesterday that that two two curveball that led to that big inning. And again, <laughs> but it's uh it's you 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 don't know what the criteria is for the MLB umpires to get to the playoffs, but they're also. Supposed if, what i heard once that they go through a <laughs> i fucking laugh at this that they go through a physical program like like through a and i'm like get the hell out of here get the hell out of here like uh like you have to do some some exercise type stuff and i'm like get out of here it's uh, get out of here it's There's like no way one, like, like that one meme we see where the guy's checking in at security where he's like yeah all right good there you yeah. go. Here, here's yeah. an exercise program. Here you go. Pulse. Joe West yeah. has to pass. Had, had to pass a physical test. Yeah. Uh, in his career, him. You know. Yeah, he was um, but again, you know. Um, but you let me ask you this, though, Rick. We brought him about the umpire part, and yesterday, um, that's a good conversation. Good platica here, man. We should do this more often. But it's only during baseball playoff season. Um, Marco Palau says the umpire umps get graded. They do get graded, but we don't 
find out what they are. I'm, I believe, Mark, I don't know what their criteria is that we get. For the NFL, we see it. The NBA, we see it. Uh, baseball umpires, I don't know what it, it's like. We don't get the, the grades. I know they get graded, but we don't get the grades. Um, like, like, for example, like Angel Hernandez gets, you know, playoff games. Laz Diaz, who hasn't been sharp, gets playoff games. And they get big-time playoff games behind it that can impact yeah. the game like it clearly did yesterday. And uh, I'm not saying I want robo-umps, but just give me the best guys that have, you know, just just like anything, reward but, the best umpires in the playoffs. I don't give so a So here's shit how it is, right? If you're doing the N- the LCS, the League Championship Series, you will not do the World Series. So the ones who are going to do the World Series are the umpires who rated best this year, according to their criteria. So you'll get a- – But why not have the best for every playoff series, you know, if they have to work both? I mean, I don't know if the umpires probably say, like, I don't want to do that. That's – that. But, I would – no, they, they would – look. you know those umpires, they, so they want to work them all. I would just say it's a union thing. Okay. So will Joe West be able to work the World Series? No, he's series? done. Joe West he's last done. game was the wild card game. Okay. He wasn't eligible for the rest of the playoffs because he did the wild card, which means he didn't rate that high during the regular wow. season. So you rate a certain amount. This is what I've been told: is you rate a certain yeah. amount and you get to however far you're going to get, and the World Series umpires are going to be different. But you try to figure out it's how they did that year, but you also see who has the seniority. And if you do the World Series one year. You don't do it the next. Like that's because remember, umpires also get bonuses for doing playoffs. Yeah, yeah, for sure. Yeah, for sure. So it's it's and, a, I mean, and it's above my table. You know, and for me, the the and he's a guy <laughs> that some guys didn't like, but Tim McClellan to me was always sharp, man. He was sharp behind the play. That was and, a six foot he, six guy, right? Yeah, he had his. He's the one that threw out George Fred over the pine tar. Yeah, remember? Yeah, him. But I always felt like one, he was he could be an asshole back there, but he was sharp. He knew what he wanted to do. You can come and talk to him and he he'd let you know. Um, so I always thought that was pretty cool. And he had a consistent zone, I, I feel like. And and guys didn't like the zone sometimes, but you know, for a pitcher, I thought he was he was always pretty sharp when yeah. I when I had him in there. You know, you always say that you never in our group chat I always get the kick out of him when I say, Hey man, Angel Hernandez used to be pretty good for me. <laughs> <laughs> you like me you like me yeah everybody like, likes yeah. you man the only guy who didn't like you was that one i'm not gonna who? say his name who the mexican, the mexican. umpire ah man <laughs> he was tougher he just had this asshole mentality man like for some reason but because he's from orange county man that's why you he probably only had, that that's to you i had a guy when i'm what was his name what was his name alfonso marquez is the name that we're talking about that did, did not like ricky according to ricky uh he was just always like just seemed like i don't know cb buckner was horrible I mean, I can go on and on. I mean, but there was a guy who one day I was walking off the field and he's like, uh, there used to be a, who was, uh, oh, he was like, JC, JC, because Romero, JC Romero, JC, JC. And I was like, I was like, wait, you don't even know who's up. My name's not JC. Oh, for the field? Yeah. He's like, <laughs> I was like, JC. And he goes, he looks up at the scoreboard and he goes, oh, shit. Shit, man, my bad. He's like, my bad, my bad, my bad. like, dude. He apologized the whole game. He had a, he had a really decent strike zone that night too. I was like, all right, he's making it up, you know. But I was like, you fucking call me JC, man. And he and you know, but you know, again, he called you Puerto Rican, bro. I've had, I, I, I've told the story before. You know, you know who's behind the plate in a series. You know who's working the series in the in the clubhouse. There's always a list of the umpires that we're gonna have. There's scouting reports on each umpire. I never really, really looked at the umpires. I just kind of always looked at their names because I wanted to know their names. So if it was like, you know, Jerry Mills, you know, hey, Jerry, how you doing? Uh, before I step on the mound, you kind of give them a, a head nod and, and and stuff like that to kind of just, you know what? Hey, you try not to show them up. You try not to like, 
you know, if anything, you walk in between innings. This is what I was taught. You walk in between innings, call him by Jerry, where, where'd you have that 2-2 pitch? And he'll be like, I had a little out. You know, um, if you keep sticking it there, I'll, I'll eventually open up that zone for you a little bit. You know, stuff like that where there's communication. But there's certain guys that you really can't approach. The that they're like, kids, huh? I remember the one time I was walking towards one – towards I, who? I, again, I, I'm blanking out on who it was, but I was walking towards him, and he's like, don't even fucking come here. And I was like, whoa. And I just fucking – Boop, boop, quick turn back to the dugout, you know? And um, that's something that's lost too with these younger umpires. You really can't do that communication. Yeah, yeah. yeah, and 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 again, I mean, some guys are approachable, other guys aren't, our other guys don't want to be questioned, you know. And 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 I was never doing it out of bad intention. I didn't want to show anybody up. Obviously, sometimes in the heat of the game, yeah, you're like, where the fuck was that? You know, and you throw your hands up. Like it's just hey, it's it's in everyone's right nature to be able to do that, especially in a big situation. But um, yeah, I mean, to the point where I uh, I got thrown out, and that never came close. You know, nah, obviously, yeah. again, because you there's a reputation you got to be able to have, and and yeah. and when you have that reputation, they'll stick it to you, you know. And I just never wanted to be that guy. Yeah, the, I just don't like umpires that throw you out from a distance. Like, get close, man. Yeah. Let me get my money's worth. Don't throw me out from like thirty feet away. I want to yeah. see an argument. Anyway, uh, again, like, these guys have a lot of big time egos. You know, they have big time egos. And you just kind of have to learn how to work around those egos. And 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 I hate saying it, but yeah, sometimes you have to be able to kiss ass. And that's why catchers are the best at it. Josh will tell you. I, I, you know what? Next time, next week, Josh will tell you about the way they handle umpires and and and, and stuff like that. And 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 making sure they're kind of. Hey, you good? I got this. Yeah, one. I got hey, this. Like, you know, you hear guys, hitters who are like, dude, like. So and so doesn't shut the fuck up. He's talking to the umpire the whole time, you know. And I can see Josh probably being one of those guys that just <laughs> talk the whole time, and you know. So we don't see those conversations, but a lot of the times they're having conversations with the umpires, obviously because they have their mask on. You can't really see it, but, um, but yeah, I mean, it's it's it, you know that whole aspect of it again for me. It's it's the beauty in baseball, you know. Yeah. You're gonna have human element side to it, um. And, and, you know, there's going to be calls missed, but you just hate to see them in, in big situations. Yeah. But again, you, you know, especially early in the game, you just – the way I was taught was you adapt. You know, you become mentally stronger than the umpire and you don't let it get to you. You know, that was a part of the whole rest in peace Ken Revisa. You know, he wanted you he wanted you to see – take, uh, you know, when the umpire would screw you over, he'd be like, good, good. How are you going to bounce back from that? You know, how are you going to adjust your game to that? You know, well, you know that's giving, a – it's something you bring up because this is what I want to get to. And last thing, damn, I can't believe we've been doing an hour. This is a good conversation. Um, uh, yesterday, uh, who was the pitcher for the Dodgers? My goodness. Um, Walker. Starter, Walker Buehler. <clears throat> they talked about that. Oh, well, he didn't get the 2-2 pitch against Jock Peterson. And he's like, and then Gavin Lux drops the ball in center field. I, he's like, well, I didn't get the call. I got to make a better pitch. Like, that, yeah. he's like, it's not on Lux. <laughs> And that was our whole model, and I'm going back, you know, 2004, national champions, Cal State Fullerton. That was our whole model. And if you hear Red talk, that's how he talks. Like, he, he talks, he models a lot of the way he talks, and he does interviews after Ken Revisa. You know, you we just have to get to the next pitch. We have to get to the next pitch. You can't sit there and dwell on, a, you know, the umpire screwed me. What, do you want everyone to feel sorry for you, or are you going to move on and, and make a better pitch the next pitch? And that was the whole – can revise a thing, get to the next pitch. And that's pretty much what, you know, that that mental aspect is what helped us beat the University of Texas, the mighty University of Texas in 2004 mm. in the national championship. And we just had that mentality that, hey, if we get screwed over, it don't matter. The game isn't over. We I gotta, I gotta make a better pitch, you know, but sometimes and it's it, it's in our nature, sometimes you get mad and you don't get the pitch that you try even harder the next one. And when you start trying in the game of baseball, you start leaving pitches flat. You start leaving them up in the zone, and that's where the damage occurs. You know, whether uh, – instead of saying, like, all right, I'm going to get to the next pitch, take a deep breath, here we go, boom, execute, I'm out of the inning. But if you're sitting there dwelling on pitches and, oh, uh, he didn't give me this, he didn't give me that, then the game of baseball will eat you up easy. It's like the pitcher for the Braves to give the home run to Jock. I mean, to uh, Cody Bell. Cody. He said, I threw up high. I thought it was a good pitch. And he hit he it. He said he would do it again. Yeah. He's like, I'll do it again. Yeah. I mean, and it's. And, and he'll probably we, miss. 
we've seen Cody struggle with that pitch. Yep. You know, up in the zone, he just can't get to it. And, hey, stars aligned for him yesterday, you know, and that's the beauty of baseball, you know. And, and, and who and, said and, that Cody was going get, to get out of that slump? Who said Cody was going to be big for the Dodgers? <laughs> I said it a while ago, man. He, I was like, if, if this team, this team has, yeah. if he gets going, uh, it just makes that team that much better. I mean, shoot, they're hitting him out of the seven or eighth hole. Like, yeah, like he's still scary, and I'm and I'm sure teams like not like are gonna continue to like be like, whoa, like careful because this guy can hurt. You know, this guy can hurt you at any point. So, um, <clears throat> you know, again, yeah, we we dug into a lot of stuff, but it was good. A lot though. Of good it was good. It's a uh... Like I said, I'm not a big analytics guy, uh, but I came across this guy named Enos Harris, and I sent that picture or the story out to the group chat about what the, happened with the Dodgers and what, where it's going on. And Cody Bellinger yesterday, we didn't talk to him as far as the media uh, on the dugout. They brought out the assistant hitting coach like to talk about it. And it was really interesting just to hear like about this. Like We never get a chance to talk to those guys. Why, why would you want to? But that's yeah. how bad Cody Bellinger had been going that they bring out the hitting coach who explained how they changed things up, how he's doing different things. He moved to the front of the box, just like these little things. So when fans are like, oh, he needs to go to the minors, he needs to do this. It's like, this guy's a professional. Like, he knows what he's doing. He knows the swing better than anybody else. And don't tell me what he did two years ago. He needs to go back to that because your body changes, you evolve. And it, it, it was cool and, to see. And, and, yeah. and, and, and he's dealt with injuries too, man. Yes. I mean, shoot. He's skinny. So uh, you know, and then he messed up his ankle early in the season. All that stuff plays a big role in it. And he's trying to go out there and grind again for the for the 24 guys in that clubhouse. And and he's not he's not trying to struggle, you know. And 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 uh, I, the game of baseball is a game of adjustments. And I'm glad he made those adjustments. And hopefully, you can you continue to see a, a healthy swinging uh, Cody Bellinger because it's fun. You know, I, I love watching him swing when he when he gets a hold of it and. Uh, those balls come out like you know absolute rockets out of his bat, and um, um, the Dodgers are just, just that much better of a team when he when he's on and all the bashing and and stuff like that. I mean, for what? I mean, he the, bit, the guy one sixty five this year. Yeah, that's one sixty five. Two years ago, he was the MVP. It's what have you done for me lately? One sixty five. Uh, was but, it the- hey, you 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 agree to this? I mean, the guy goes on and carries this team, continues to carry this team. Nobody will ever know he hit 164 this season. No. And Nobody. also with that, it's when we're like, well, why is he playing at the end of the season? Because he does so well in defense too. He, he had you add yeah. you have to find a way to add things for it. So he hit 165. And uh Jason Stark had a good article today in the Athletic also about this. The Dodgers were six out away from the season being essentially done. Six outs Pedro, away. Pedro said it. Pedro said he was yeah, like, I was writing my story that they were done. All those guys. Done. Did. Um, was it the biggest home run at Dodger Stadium? No, because I would say Kirk Gibson is the biggest one because it was a walk-off. We talked about that. That was in the World Series. Uh, but you know what this reminded me? You you might be too young for this, Rick. Um, remember uh, in 88, Mike Sosha hit a homer off Doc Gooden in the rain. It was at Shea Stadium, and it was one of those where the Dodgers were down. Uh, what are you going to do? And he came back and did that. So Sosha did it in game four of the NLCS. Uh it was a game tying home off of Doc. The Dodgers won in 12 innings, and they went on to win in the NLCS and the World Series. So one swing can just change a series all around, and hopefully yeah. it did for the Dodgers. You know why? Because if they do, I keep on working. Uh, so if I they, if I'm playing, I keep on working. That means we get some more money for golf. So if he, if the Dodgers That's lose the series, I ain't golfing. <laughs> Simple as that. Simple as Simple. that. All right. All right. So thanks to everybody who uh, watched. It. Appreciate it. Uh, good baseball talk from. Uh, Robert Flores, Pedro Mora, got Josh Soley coming on. Ricky, dude, your, your insight is so good, man. It's like really <laughs> giving us a different perspective of how to think when it comes to the baseball mind. It's a, a lot of fun to do. We'll be doing more of these throughout the playoffs. If the Dodgers keep on rolling, we keep on going with it. Uh, but definitely we'll be back. Uh, Shit, hopefully. even if the Dodgers don't keep on rolling, man, we'll still do it. Shit. But then I can't tell you stories about how the parking lot was going on, and I can't tell you stories about me running around, <laughs> me me and the mariachi hanging out yesterday. You watching the World Series, whether the Dodgers are in it or not. Well, okay, all right. If you want to do more well, podcasts, I'm kind of just watching stuff like yeah, play on, you know, as as it goes on, and I'm sure there'll be plenty of stuff. Like again, we didn't even dig into what Alex Cora did yesterday, you know, and Nick yeah. Vetta. And pulling him after five innings, like 60 pitches, you know, all that stuff. Like, this is, yeah, I mean, 
And uh, yeah, so we'll do it. We'll do it. All right. Well, yeah, Dodgers have Mariachi yesterday. They had a cutout of Joe Kelly. Uh, the, the Dodgers Mariachi played take me out to the ball game in the seventh inning. So that was cool. Today, they're going to have a Dixieland jazz band. Eric Carroll's throwing out the first pitch. It was Adrian Gonzalez yesterday. Um, <laughs> a- Adrian, yeah. Yeah. you know why I'm mad at Adrian? Because what? he was he was supposed to be there at a certain time, and he showed up a couple minutes late because of the, the traffic to get into the stadium. And because he showed up late, I had to do the Channel 2 hit with Jim Hill. But I was supposed to go like have a cocktail with a friend of mine because I didn't have to work until after the game. So because Adrian showed up late, I had to get a cocktail. I, I missed out on my cocktail. See? It's all about me again, Rick. <laughs> all right. So, all right. Thanks a lot for everybody. Appreciate you guys. Uh, Bandit will be at the game today. And as always, the Ace of SoCal will not be at another Dodger game. Yeah. How about that, man? Yesterday, I felt like yesterday was the perfect, the original Ace of SoCal. Yesterday was the perfect sports day for him. This, I'm going to go to the Dodger game, 2 o'clock, watch him. And then I'm going to head over to the Staples Center, go watch the Lakers. Yeah. And nothing. But hey, it's his girl. It's his girlfriend's birthday month, so he's got to be celebrating all month. So it's his birthday. It's me. his girlfriend's birthday month, and Jupiter is the same as Mer- Mercury and Mars are all aligned. So he has to go, and he's got to go like, uh, like Bed Bath and Beyond or something. You know, maybe Home yeah, Depot. It's gonna be a big like, weekend. He went to the Raiders game, and that cost him a lot of money. So he's got to sh- shut up. <laughs> And he stopped. Hey, and he wouldn't even bet on the Raiders. He's a Raiders fan. Wouldn't even bet on him. I did that too. I did. Yeah. I I bet Ricky twenty bucks that the Raiders would win. I didn't even know the point spread. I took him. Ricky sent me the money from Venmo, and I sent it right back to him. I said for for Aces <laughs> engagement flowers. There you go. <laughs> hey, R.I.P. Ace. Uh, it's Anthony now. Jo- Joel Sanchez Berlinguer. Hey, Sanchi. Yeah, he used, he he did the fantasy camp with the with the with the Jays in. Uh, in in tampa um that's where i met him he's from puerto rico good dude loves baseball and yeah he 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 he, he was usually the catcher dude oh. these, these dudes go out there and, and 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 strap on the gear and they're playing tough but hey saludos joel Salud, saludos uh, all right so we will see you uh keep updated on the ricky roll uh, let's go ricky roll instagram page we'll let you know when the next show is for sure next tuesday uh, but if Dodgers keep going, maybe do it on Thursday, maybe Friday. You never know. All right, Rick, I'll talk to you later for everybody involved. All right. uh, oh, Bandit, if you go today, I'll drink a beer today, Bandit. Don't worry. I'll be there. I'll be there uh, CBS 2 today. Bandit, if I go tomorrow, um, I'll have a michelada on you. All right. Let's go. Bye, people. <laughs>